What is going on? Welcome back to the channel. We're back out in the garage today and we're getting ready to start on a, another project. Uh, coincidentally, it's going to be with the frame again. Uh, so what we're going to work on this time is the body mount location on the frame. So uh, these cars are pretty notorious for being rusty in general. I got this frame out of a Malibu, which was, uh, it was really clean. Um, the biggest issue I have with it is the front mounts where the firewall comes down and meets the frame. The water collects in there and it just sits and it rots out. Um, the one on my car uh, is gone on the driver, driver side, passenger side, uh, and rusty on the driver side. Um, this one I'm assuming was not as bad, but it was getting there. Um, so again, this one very similarly, passenger side is much worse than the driver side. Um, it's just how the water collects in these things. But anyway, what the plan is, is to uh, cut these uh, bad areas out and weld in some new uh, mounting areas for that uh, body mount to land on. So as we can see here, this is where the body mount sits. Uh, the body mount sits in this hole and then there's a, a metal box that actually goes uh, off of the firewall on here and that's where the water collects but uh, if we look in here real close we can see this one's been cut a little bit but all this dimpling is from rust starting um, some years ago they should look something more similar like this um, you can see where it was sitting but it's nice and smooth um, and the rest of the car is like that as well you can see back here these are super solid there was nothing going on with these and they're like that in the back as well so um, the biggest problems are these two front ones. So we can see again, maybe better like this. You can see all that dimpling. That's where rust was uh, forming. And this is the better of the two sides. Like I said, on my car is the same way. Um, this one is much worse. You can see it was starting to eat here and it was getting thin. So I want to cut this out and replace it. Uh, so what I did is I called my buddy Jeff over at First Try Engineering. Um, see if I could put a link below for his uh, shop. And I had him cut me out these uh, essentially washers. And I had him do uh, the ID the same, but the OD I did different. So these are one and a half inch uh, center. And I want to say these are three inch and these are two inch. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to use. Um, so he cut me out a few of each and sent them over to me um, right quick. I got them in a few days, which was awesome. Um, so what I'm planning on doing here is uh, we can see that fits on there pretty nice. Um, but there is a little bit of overlap from the area that is not so nice. I don't know if it's going to be thick enough or not. Um, these ones seem to fit a little better, these uh, larger ones. I just don't know if uh, I'm going to be able to uh, weld in here good enough because I'm going to have to come into this a little bit here or the factory seam is uh, to get that down in there. Uh, we'll see. I'll probably end up using these so that there's a larger pad, a nicer pad uh, for it to land on. Um, so the plan for this is to line the, the new seg, uh, washer piece, I guess, um, on the center hole here. And then I'm gonna use a scribe or something to scribe the frame uh, to the outside and then um, use a hole saw lined up on that scribe line and go straight down and then from there i should be able to just drop this straight in um, use uh, some magnets or something to hold it in place and then throw some tack welds on it and then be you know ready to weld up around the perimeter there and then just like the other stuff grind it down make it smooth um, because we don't want any inter interference you can see it's pretty tight here so when that box is sitting on here we want to make sure it's not going to hit anything um, and then paint it and uh, call it a day so we're going to get started with that and uh, see how things go Alright, so here's the reality in it. Um, this piece, which is what I wanted to use, which is that scribe line on the outside, 
is larger than any of the hole saws I have, but the largest one I have is the same size as this. So change of plans and we are gonna go with this one, which is why you see the two scribe lines here. So again, I used the center of this and I lined these up just by finger and eye. And then I made a scribe line. I'm gonna cut that out, weld this in. Uh, hopefully there's enough uh, good metal on the edge there to uh, make this all work. I guess we'll find out soon enough, but uh, let's get to cutting. Well, as you probably saw there, I was having some difficulty lining up the uh, hole saw in the hole. Um, I have no way to stabilize it or center it, um, so it just kind of chattered and it's not, it's not gonna work. Um, so what I'm thinking is I'm gonna use my Dremel. Um, they make some discs that are like more reinforced heavy duty for cutting longer periods of time. Uh, I actually might have some left over. I used to have some some years ago. I'll have to check and see. But uh, regardless, now that I have to do it that way, I might as well just cut the larger hole and go out to the known good metal. Um, and doing it that way, I'm not gonna have to cut into the seam uh, of the frame. What I'll end up doing is shaving down one of the areas of the washer so that it fits the area of the seam. Um, so I don't have to compromise any of that. Um, so I guess that's gonna be the next step to see if I have any of those bits uh, left. If not, I gotta head to the store and get some. And then from there, start grinding. <laughs> 